Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Clifton Webb, Colleen Gray, and Robert Stack in Mr. Belvedere Goes to College. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeling. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. On rare occasions, a character in a picture or play will become so identified with one star that the audience simply can't imagine anyone else in the part. Now, that's the way it is with Mr. Belvedere and Clifton Webb. It all began in a delightful comedy called Sitting Pretty. And the public admired Mr. Belvedere and Clifton Webb to such a fabulous extent that a sequel was immediately demanded. 20th Century Fox came through a few months ago with a second hit, Mr. Belvedere Goes to College. You'll hear it tonight with Clifton Webb as the versatile and ubiquitous Lynn Belvedere. And starring with Mr. Webb are Robert Stack and Colleen Gray. Colleen Gray, as a co-ed, is quite typical of the standard of beauty among American college girls. You know, there's one thing these girls seem to learn long before they go to college, and that's the best way to take care of a beautiful complexion. Like the screen stars, the smart co-eds depend on Lux Toilet Soap Care. Once again, you meet the famous Mr. Belvedere as the curtain rises on the first act of tonight's play, starring Clifton Webb in a title role, Colleen Gray as Ellen, and Robert Stack as Bill. On a bright autumn morning, a visitor pauses at the gates of Clemens University. Then, with an air of mixed boredom and determination, he starts across the campus. Avery. The tickets for the Wabash game. They're on sale now. At the... Oh, watch where you're going, Joe. You bump right into the statue. Say, who is this statue anyway? Who is it? That's Mr. Lux Lux. Who? Mr. Lux Lux. Can't you read what it says there? Lux Betis, Lux Orbis. Yeah, but well, what's it mean? Search me. Maybe he's the guy who invented the soap they advertise on the radio. Lux Mentis, Lux Orbis. Huh? Oh. The light of the mind is the light of the world. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. The point is well taken. <laughs> Can either of you adolescents direct me to the office of the dean? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Straight ahead to the library at two blocks right. Thank you. Well, who's that guy? Do prop, I guess. Come on, Joe. Let's get our ticket. Come in, sir. Come in. Well, well. So you are Lynn Belvedere. Uh, that is correct. Dean Gibbs? I can't tell you how happy my wife will be to learn that I've met you. She read your book, you know. Said it was a work of art. Yes, it is. <clears throat> now, uh, just what can I do for you, Mr. Belvedere? You may register me in this university. But what on earth for? $10,000. I, I don't follow. Uh, Dr. Gibbs, my novel, Hummingbird Hill, has just won the Moorhouse Award, consisting of a gold medal and $10,000 in cash. Well, surely the money doesn't mean anything to you. Money is the root of all evil. I respect it. <laughs> the less I have of it, the more I respect it. And at the moment, I have the greatest respect for it. <laughs> but you must have made a fortune on your book. I also lost a fortune in libel suits. I am, in legal terms, a pauper. But what has all this to do with postgraduate work here at Clemens? Not postgraduate work. I wish to register as a freshman. A freshman? But, Mr. Belvedere... Unfortunately, the Morehouse Award stipulates that the recipient hold a college degree. And you don't? My formal education was limited to two revolting weeks in kindergarten. <laughs> Why, you're not serious. I am grim. But, good heavens, man, who taught you? The most exacting person I've ever met, myself. <laughs> well... This is simply phenomenal. Yes, it is. And you want to spend the next four years here so that you may claim this literary prize? One year. I beg your pardon? Uh, one year. But that's impossible. You're six weeks late already, and you expect to complete a four-year course in one year? I intend, Dr. Gibbs, not expect. But it's never been done before. I've never been here before. <laughs> Mr. Belvedere, if you don't mind, I suggest we call on President Keating uh, immediately. Thank you. Mr. 
appears to be a very special case, Mr. Belvedere. Oh, a very special case. It certainly is, President Keating. And I am going to make an exception. That is as it should be. But, Dr. Keating, he doesn't even hold a high school diploma. Therefore, Dean Gibbs, you will arrange entrance examinations as soon as Mr. Belvedere is prepared for them. Uh, would uh, February be too soon? February? By February, I should be entering my sophomore year. <laughs> Your... Your what? Dean Gibbs, I shall be grateful if your staff examines me at the earliest possible moment. Uh, shall we say this afternoon? This afternoon? You heard him, Dean Gibbs, this afternoon. These grades, Mr. Belvedere, astonishing, simply astonishing. Yes, aren't they? And his IQ, President Keating, the highest I've ever seen. Naturally. I am a genius. <laughs> and that very fact compels me to suspect your motive, Mr. Belvedere, in joining us here. Mr. Belvedere, this attempt of yours to complete four years' schooling in less than one, well, it could disguise an ulterior motive, you know. A subterfuge is a strategy employed by idlers and parasites. I have never been either. Then you won't object if we stipulate a condition... Which is? That if you should attempt to use this university for a... for a publicity stunt to exploit your novel or yourself... If there is any notoriety or sensationalism during your stay here, it shall become my unpleasant duty to expel you. Condition accepted. Then allow me to welcome you officially to Clemens University. Uh, thank you, President Keating. But, but Avery, I'm not kidding. He's there in our room now. An old guy. Gee whiz, I thought maybe it was your father or something come to visit you. But what old guy? <laughs> Who is he? I, I don't know. I was kind of scared to ask him. He gives you such a funny look. Well, we'll see about that right now. Hey, what's going on here? It's quite obvious, young man. I have been assigned to this dormitory, and I am unpacking my clothing. Yeah? Well, shut that window. I am merely ventilating my 840 cubic feet. <laughs> you what? You see, Avery, I told you. You shut up. Young man... This room contains 2,520 cubic feet. Since there are three beds in the room, each of us is entitled to breathe 840 cubic feet of air and no more. Fresh air. <laughs> Gee whiz, can't you see I got a cold in my head? A physiological impossibility, young man. Disease cannot exist in a vacuum. <laughs> Shut up. I saw you yesterday on the campus, didn't I, by Mr. Lux Lux? Now, who are you? A gentleman... An exceedingly unkind fate has thrown us together. Uh, you mean you're going to be our roommate? Regrettably, yes. You're a student? Uh, that is correct, my nasal neophyte. <laughs> what class? I am a freshman. Oh. A freshman? Well, you don't say. I'm a freshman, too. But Avery here, he's a sophomore. What's your name? Lynn Belvedere. You will address me as Mr. Belvedere. Now, listen here, you. You're in college and you're a freshman, the lowest form of animal life. <laughs> and while you're here, you're right under this thumb. So what do you got to say about that? It needs a manicure. <laughs> the code of the campus, understand? Does the code of the campus permit me to make a suggestion? <laughs> Shoot. Blow your nose. <laughs> Now, listen, you. My name is Avery Brubaker, and you refer to me at all times as Mr. Brubaker, see? Uh, my name's Cornelius Whitaker, Mr. Belvedere. But on account of I'm a freshman, too, you can call me Corny. Shut up. And you'll do everything I say or get pegged for the sophomore council. Boing! Am I to understand that this university supports an inquisition? Oh, boy, does it. I can show you the scars. Where's your dig? I beg your pardon. Oh, he means this, Mr. Belvedere. This little cap we got to wear, see? It's a dink. You get out of the co-op, Belvedere, and buy yourself a dink. You wear it at all times, see? And if you don't, boy... <laughs> you mean I am compelled to wear this obscene article? Oh, you get used to him after a while. You and Whitaker will share a cleaning up this joint, making my bed for me and calling me for classes. Any questions, Belvedere? Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm going to the library. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to the co-op and buy yourself a dink. And when you've bought yourself a dink and put the dink on your head, then, mister, then maybe you'd go to the library. You got me? I've got you, Mr. Brubaker, and the possession revolts me. <laughs> Good day. Hello? Yes, young lady? 
Pardon me, but by any chance are you Lynn Belvedere, the author of Hummingbird Hill? I am the author of Hummingbird Hill, but uh, not by chance. Oh, I've been looking everywhere for you. I heard you were registered, and I just had to see you. I'm sorry, young lady. I do not give autographs. Oh, I don't want an autograph. I'm Ellen Baker, and I'm on the Daily Lion. Uh, that's the college newspaper. And I want to interview you. About what? Well, what you think of college, and how it feels to be a freshman at your age, and... Well, just about everything. Miss Baker, uh, since my arrival here, certain circumstances make it impossible for me to grant any interviews. But it's vitally important to me. Why, an interview with a celebrity like you might give me my start as a writer. I admire your ambition, Miss Baker, but my answer is irrevocably no. Now, would you be so kind as to tell me where the Student Employment Bureau is located? Well, it's right across the street from the co-op, but if you're... Uh, thank you, Miss Baker. Yes, this is the Student Employment Bureau, all right. But since the two of you came in pricey together... Well, ladies first. Hi, Ellen. Hello, Bill. Why, ladies first? Just common courtesy, the usual thing. For your information, young man, woman has never been first in the entire tragic history of the human race. <laughs> huh? It was not Adam who sprang from Eve's rib, nor did Mrs. Noah captain the ark. Neither can the distaff side claim Mr. Einstein, nor Mr. Tchaikovsky, nor Mr. Lincoln. What about Madame Curie? Monsieur Curie's story has never been told. <laughs> Therefore, Miss Baker, you will kindly step aside. Okay, mister, what can I do for you? I am seeking part-time employment during the college year. What's your name? Lynn Belvedere. And now exactly why do you need employment? In order that I won't starve to death. Yeah, well, that's a pretty good reason. What can you do? Everything. Well, most of the better jobs are all filled by now. Let's see now. Uh, there's an opening for a soda jerk. Hmm, there still is. <laughs> would you, uh, would you like to be a babysitter? I've been all through that. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all there is, Mr. Belvedere. Except assistant hasher at the Trigam house. But I wouldn't recommend that to my worst enemy. Tell me, what is a, a trigam house? Oh, that's a sorority. The Gamma 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 sorority. Girls, Mr. Belvedere. Lots of them. They've got the best Norwegian cook in the world, but outside of that, oh, brother. And uh, what are the functions of an assistant hesha? Oh, waiting on table, helping clean up the place. You get three meals a day and 50 bucks a month. Say, my mother's a house mother there, so if you want the job, it's yours. Mm, I accept the position. I'm warning you. This is the slap-happiest bunch of dames on the whole campus. In that case, there will be some changes made. <laughs> okay. Here, just take this car to the Trigam house and ask for my mother, Mrs. Chase. She'll take care of you. Thank you. What can I do for you, Ellen? Oh, nothing special. I was just showing Mr. Belvedere where the employment bureau was located. It's obvious, Mr. Chase, that Miss Baker is slightly less than delighted to see you and is using me for a strategic withdrawal. Good day. <sighs> <laughs> He's quite a character, isn't he? So are you. Now, why did you come here? Well, because a friend of mine needs a babysitter for afternoons. Okay, what address? 41 Burnham Street. Hey, that's where you live, isn't it? Well, it's an apartment house. Ellen, look, four weeks. That's a long time to be brushed off. I haven't been brushing you off, Bill. It's just that... Oh, sure, I know. Between classes and all the work in the newspaper, you're just having a minute to spare. Why do you think I put you on the staff? Well, because... Being a good editor, you know I can write. Sure, and your big blue eyes had nothing to do with it. Oh, well, what's your friend's name? The one with the baby. Mrs. David Ashley. Well, tell her we can't promise anything. You know, people are beginning to find out that there are easier ways of making money than having Junior vivisect them. Don't you like children? Crazy about them. Especially with their straight jackets on. Oh, I'll tell her. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> waiting to see somebody? I am waiting to see uh, Mrs. Chase. Oh. Well, just barge right in the living room and spread out. I'll tell her you're here. Thank you. Mrs. Chase! Oh, don't mind me. I'm just practicing. For an execution? You have been mutilating the entire composition. Oh, I have. Well, I suppose you can play better. That is correct. <laughs> Allow me. Yes, it is. Beethoven? I beg your pardon? Beethoven? No. Belvedere. 
No, you play like Rubenstein. Rubenstein plays like me. <laughs> oh, how do you do? I'm Mrs. Chase, the house mother. Now, how do you do? And may I say that this house which you're mothering is on the brink of chaos. <laughs> Isn't it just so? Mrs. Chase, I am Lynn Belvedere. Oh, but of course. You must be the father of one of my girls. In that unlikely event, madam, I think you would recall my face. Your son sent me here. He gave me this card. My son? You, Assistant Asher? Oh, but that's silly. I am in need of substance, madam. I chose this position. Oh, you're just teasing me, Mr. Belvedere. You're not really a student. You don't really want to hash here. If you will outline my duties, yes, really. Oh, well, I feel it only fair to tell you the job offers very little opportunity. With 20 undisciplined females in the house, I shall make my own opportunity. Oh, yes. Uh, well, if you'll just follow me, I'll introduce you to our cook. Thank you. And this is Mr. Belvedere, Martha. He's our new assistant, Asher. Martha is our treasure, Mr. Belvedere. How do you do? Me get the talk, Martha. Men are dead, they can snuck an horse. Selzak. Mm, ut merket, ut merket. Why, Mr. Belvedere, you speak Norwegian. I speak 11 tongues fluently, including the Indian Sign Language. Oh. <laughs> Won't that be nice for Martha? Hiya. Oh, Avery, I'm so glad you're here. I want you to meet your new assistant. Assistant? Uh, to him? Well, how do you do, de Belvedere, old boy? So you're going to be my little helper. Oh, you two know each other? Unfortunately, yes. And I regret to inform you that I, I have just resigned. What? Mr. Belvedere. My dear Martha, I'm sorry our association was so short-lived. Given a little more time, I could have brought you to full flower as a cook. If he quits, Mrs. Chase, they quit too. Oh, Martha, no. No, you can't. Come, Mr. Belvedere, we get new job together. You can't quit, either of you. If anyone is going to quit around here, it'll be... Well, gee whiz, Mrs. Chase. What have I done? Uh, One moment, please. I recognize that Mr. Brubaker is inviting a proposal for compromise. Very well, Mr. Brubaker. During our working hours, we shall observe an armed truce. In the event of any aggression, I shall retain the veto power over your trigamma destiny. Agreed? Huh? Well, yeah, I guess so. Splendid. <laughs> Fetch me a white jacket, Mr. Brubaker, and hop to it. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, tell me, Martha, come here. What is... Uh, what is for dessert this evening? Can pineapple. Ah, spare the can of tomato. <laughs> the dessert will be my contribution. You make? Oh, it's good, good. And tonight, Mrs. Chase, we shall dine buffet. That is all. You may go now. <laughs> Everybody, look what's coming in for dessert. What is it, crepe Suzette? Crepe Belvedere. Crepe what? That plate is not for you, Miss Hawkenclaus. Uh, kindly be good enough to serve Mrs. Chase. Oh, but I always wait on myself, Mr. Belvedere. You are an elder, Mrs. Chase. Therefore, you will be seated and Miss Hawkenclaus will serve you. Oh, well. Mm. Hey, get a load of this dessert. Is this stuff dreamy? Miss Norman, appreciation of good cuisine should be demonstrated without benefit of dialogue or sound effects. Sorry, Mr. Belvedere. Well, I, for one, don't need lessons in manners from a hasher. Uh, possibly not, Miss Auchincloss, but your appearance warrants comment. Oh, such as? Uh, since you ask, I should advise you to make no claims which you cannot later prove. Well, really? I'm referring to your eyelashes, Miss Auchincloss. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously artificial. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, have you got a minute? Why, Bill? <laughs> Young ladies, please, please. We can only stay a minute, Mom. I'd like to have you meet Ellen Baker. Ellen, this is my mother. Oh, how do you do, my dear? Why, you must be new. I haven't seen you before, have I? I guess not, Mrs. Chase. You see, I transferred here from Stanford for my senior year. Oh? Your home is in California? Uh, just outside of Burlingame. Burlingame? Oh, of course! The Bakers of Burlingame. Oh, I danced once with Medbury Baker. Oh, I don't know. Of course, I was much younger then. You see, my family... The Medbury Bakers. Well, well, well. Now, you two must stay and have coffee with uh, me. I'm, I'm sorry, Mom. We've got to blow. But you will have dinner with us, Miss Baker, next week, maybe. Oh, thanks. I'd love to. Oh, splendid. Well, good night, Miss Baker. Bill, what's this Medbury Baker business about? Don't mind my mother. She's got bruises from jumping to conclusions. Oh, girls, 
did you see who that was? Ellen Medbury Baker from Burlingame. Oh, wonderful family. Very distinguished. You know, you girls ought to rush her. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Belvedere. You were about to say something. Yes, I too have a word for the young ladies. Now then, as we conclude our first meal, I wish to comment on my observations. Miss Atkins, Miss Smith, Miss Harris. Yes, yes. You have dined tonight with shirt tails out hanging. Sloppiness is definitely passé, even at Wellesley. Miss Willis, the Johnson twins. Yes? You were several minutes late. Henceforth, hours for meals will be rigidly enforced as follows. Breakfast, 7 to 8 a.m. Lunch, 12 to 1 p.m. Dinner, 7 to 8 p.m. One second late, no admittance. We shall now synchronize our watches. <laughs> Are you ready? It is now precisely 8.02. Check. Check. Thank you. Good night, young ladies. Thanks for the walk, Bill. It was so nice meeting your mother. But why can't I come up? Come on, be nice. Invite me. But I told you, Bill, I, I have to babysit. That, that friend of mine. Uh, Mrs. Ashley, huh? But when do I see you again? Do you want to? I wasn't very good company. Oh, under my guidance, you'll improve. Tomorrow night? Seven? Okay, Bill. Tomorrow night. And just be sure your friend gets someone else to hold hands with her little monster. Yes, uh, yes, I'll tell her, Bill. Good night. In a few moments, we'll bring you Act Two of Mr. Belvedere Goes to College. And now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, with news about the stars. You know, Barbara Stanwyck amazes me. Such a straightforward person in real life, but what a ruthless character on the screen. It takes an actress of Barbara's caliber to play the high-tension role she has in her new picture, Thelma Jordan. Mm, what a thriller Hal Wallace has just turned out for Paramount. Or perhaps I should say Cheller. Thelma Jordan certainly made my blood run cold. Well, that's what top-notch melodrama should do, Livy, And does when it's played by experts like Barbara and her co-star, Wendell Corey. Oh, yes. Wendell certainly gives a great performance as a career man ruined by a scheming woman. And Barbara, you know, what zest and vitality she brings to every picture she makes. A great deal of glamour, too. Yes, John. With her dark, smooth beauty, Barbara Stanwyck is glamour in person. One of her greatest charms, of course, is her creamy complexion. A lovely luxe complexion. Everyone knows that Barbara's been a luxe girl for years. Yes, indeed. She's really devoted to luxe toilet soap. And for all over lo luxe loveliness, she's delighted with a new bath size cake. This fine new product of Lever Brothers Company has made a hit in Hollywood. That's because it's luxurious enough to please Hollywood's loveliest stars. That generous new cake makes a perfect beauty bath gives you lots of creamy lather, and leaves a lovely, clinging fragrance on the skin. The Luxo perfume is blended by experts. It's made of costly ingredients brought from all parts of the world. It always reminds me of a springtime bouquet. No wonder screen stars, lovely women everywhere, are enthusiastic about the new bath size Lux toilet soap. The whole family will enjoy this generous satin smooth cake. Get the bath size Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Remember... This is the fragrant white soap nine out of ten screen stars recommend. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeling. Act two of Mr. Belvedere Goes to College, starring Clifton Webb as Mr. Belvedere, Robert Stack as Bill, and Colleen Gray as Ellen. <laughs> well, several days have gone by. And Mr. Belvedere has adapted himself to life in Clemens College. Or perhaps it should be stated that Clemens College has adapted itself to life with Mr. Belvedere. That is up till now, for Mr. Belvedere has received an urgent message to report to the office of Dean Gibbs. I have been waiting for you, Mr. Belvedere, for almost an hour. Then let's not dally, Dr. Gibbs. Mr. Belvedere, have you seen this? Today's issue of the Daily Lion? I gave that alleged newspaper the casual glance it deserves. Nothing more. You have openly violated your agreement with President Keating. That is not true. I did not say those things for publication. Famous author debunks college traditions. Thinks dinks stink. Female students concentrate on nothing but men. Athletes are subsidized. 
Mr. Belvedere. My pithy observations, Dean Gibbs, were recorded by Miss Baker without my consent or knowledge. Without your consent? Definitely. Therefore, I intend to bring suit for libel, not only against this aspiring young lady, but against the university. Well, now, now, Mr. Belvedere, let's not lose our heads. Mine is securely seated, sir. Yeah, but surely there must be a more sensible way of remedying there this. There is. Miss Baker and the editors of this absurd publication must be severely reprimanded. But we can't do that. Why not? But this is a liberal university. The, the faculty can't tell students what to write. There'd be a revolt. In that event, I shall relieve the faculty of this burden and take the matters into my own hands. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, but, 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 Mr. Belvedere. Uh, yes? Oh, good afternoon. I would like to I'm see... sorry, but Mrs. Ashley isn't home. Mrs. Ashley. But I'm calling on Miss Ellen Baker. Oh, that's her maiden name. Oh. How do you do, little boy? Was Mrs. Ashley expecting you? Oh, yes. Yes, she's expecting me. Well, I'm just the babysitter. I don't know whether you I should... play with me? I should be delighted. <laughs> don't point that thing, little boy. Firearms are not for children. Put it down. But it's just a make-believe... Go Mommy! Hello, darling. You've been a good boy for Mrs. Hall? Just as good as gold, Mrs. Ashley. With a little training, you can make a very fine gangster out of him. Mr. Belvedere, what are you doing here? Nothing half so fascinating as what you're doing, Miss Baker. He said you were expecting him. It's, it's all right, Mrs. Haller. Just take Davy to his room, will you? Come along, honey. Goodbye, Daddy. Daddy? Davy, this man is not your daddy. Now run along. Isn't it a little presumptuous of you to come here uninvited? Isn't it equally presumptuous of you to write an article about me without my consent? Just because I was enterprising enough to pick up information about what you... What you wrote was not information, it was gossip. And in no less bad taste than if I were to write about your private, uh, peccadilloes. Don't you dare call Davy a, uh, peccadillo. His father and I... I am not the seat of judgment, Miss Baker. I am here merely to warn you that your future flights into journalism must not be taken at the expense of my name and reputation. Mr. Belvedere, the truth is... Well, I've simply got to write about you again in, in detail. And you expect me to consent? You must consent. It means everything to me and Davy. When I first got the idea to write an article about you for the college paper, I saw possibilities way beyond that. So you wrote to several national periodicals, huh? <laughs> this reply from Look Magazine is most interesting. It mentions the sum of... $500. You looked at that telegram on my desk? Naturally. What? Why, you're, you're an unethical eavesdropper. Yes, I am. Let me write it. I'll write the best story you ever saw. Please, Mr. Belvedere, it's the start of a career for me. And the definite end of one for me. Consent denied. All right, I'll do it anyway. And you can't stop me. You're a public figure, and I, I don't need your permission. Miss Baker... I shouldn't if I were you. The least you could do is to give me a little time to explain what this means to me. Miss Baker, I am still a freshman at the Clemens University. As such, I am compelled to attend the sophomore freshman track meet at four o'clock. Good day. The score is now tied. 22 points for the sophomores, 32 points for the freshmen. Next and final event, the pole vault. Gee, Mr. Belvedere, how can you just sit here and read a book? Didn't you hear what he said? The score's all time. I must ask you again, Cornelius, not to interrupt me. Furthermore, the month of November is an extremely unlikely time for young men to go flitting about in union suits. In any event, Cornelius... Yes? Get lost. Now on the field, pole vaulting for the sophomores... Avery Brubaker. Look at him, Mr. Belvedere. That's him. That's Avery out there. Catching another cold, no doubt. And he cleared it. Brubaker goes 12 feet 3 inches for the sophomores. Oh, no, no. Avery Brubaker goes 12 feet 3 inches for the sophomores. Oh, no, no. We're dead, Mr. Belvedere. We're cooked. Kindly stop jiggling. You don't understand why Galloway can't come near 12 feet. Who is Galloway? He's our entry, the freshman entry in the pole vault. Oh, gee, Mr. Belvedere, how can you be so calm and peaceful when these two dinks are in the balance? I beg your pardon. Holy smoke, don't you know? If we lose this pole vault to the sops, we've lost the meat, and we're stuck with these dinks till next June. And if we win? Well, we get rid of our dinks right now. Cornelius, into each life some rain must fall. <laughs> Mr. Brubaker is about to get drenched. Hey, where are you going? Mr. Belvedere, hey! Hey! 
Now rolling for the freshman, Al Galloway, in his third and final jump. The bar remains at 12 feet three. They hold everything. There's a substitute entry for the freshman. Replacing Galloway is, is Lynn Belvedere. I don't get this, Mr. Belvedere. You mean to say you're going to jump without even changing your clothes or, or anything? I shall roll up my trousers. Young man, at what height did Mr. Brubaker clear the bar? For all three. Well, that's a new high for him. Uh, kindly tell the officials to set the bar at 14 feet. 14 feet? Okay, Mr. Belvedere. Hiya, Mr. Belvedere. Good afternoon, Mr. Brubaker. You know, there are easier ways of committing suicide. A <laughs> guy your age. You'll break your back going up and your legs coming down. All set! Gangway, please. What a jump. Thank you. Do you realize it was just four inches off the record set in 1922 by a guy named... Uh, by a guy named... Now, wait a minute. It's right here in the record book. By a guy named... Lynn Belvedere. Uh, that is correct. Here. Have a dink. Thanks for such a wonderful evening, Bill. I... I don't know when I've had such a nice time. I don't know when I did either. Ellen, can't we... Can't we just sit here for a while? You sound much too serious, Bill. About you? I'm very serious. And, and there's something I'd better tell you, Bill. Uh, oh, no, not here in the car. You, you'd better come upstairs with me. Yeah, but when I called for you, you met me down here. You said the paint on the floor hadn't dried. Well, uh, I'm sure it's dry by now. Let's go up and find out. Say, this is all right. Yeah, don't blame you for hiding out here. Just sit down, Bill. There's there's someone I want you to meet. Here we go again. The mysterious Miss Baker. Mrs. Hall? Oh, hello, Mrs. Ashley. Is Davy asleep? Oh, yes. He's been fine. Oh, here's your money. Thanks again for coming. Anytime, Mrs. Ashley. Good night. Oh, uh, oh hello. How do you do? All right. Are you the one I'm supposed to meet? <laughs> I hardly think so. Good night. He? Shh. He's asleep. Hey. Hey, what is this? Remember the Mrs. Ashley? The one who needed the babysitter? <laughs> Say, he's kind of cute. I think so. But then all mothers are prejudiced. Mothers? Let's go into the living room before he wakes up. Oh, Ellen, I... I had no idea you... He's mine, Bill. And, and here... Here's a picture of his father. Air Corps, huh? 20th Air Force, bomber group. He was killed two weeks before the Japanese surrender. That... That's awful tough. It makes a difference, doesn't it? Why, oh, I, I know, but... But why have you kept it such a secret? I've just tried to keep Davy separate from my college life. That's why I came here. At the last school, it was no secret, and... Well, it took too many explanations. Like... Like now, huh? I just thought you ought to know. Oh, he's, he's a swell kid, Ellen. Bill, let's be honest. The fact that I'm a widow with a baby, it's, it's just too much to take, isn't it? Oh, you just sort of floored me, that's all. Look, I... I better run along. I, I still have some studying to do. See you in class tomorrow, huh? Sure. See you in class tomorrow. Good night, Bill. Now, take these groceries over to the cashier, Mr. Brubaker. Charge them to the Trigam house. I'll go to the meat department and pick up the turkey. Yes, Mr. Belvedere. And please stop sniffling. Gee whiz, Mr. Belvedere, ever since you became a sophomore, you've been picking on me. This will all seem mere bagatelle, Mr. Brubaker, when next week I become a junior. Gosh, how fast things can change a fellow's life. But... Good morning, Stacy. Are you my daddy? Me? Hi, Daddy. Oh, now, wait a minute. If you're looking for your old man, well... Hello, Avery. Oh, hi, Ellen. Hey, get a load of this kid. Oh, I'm sorry, Mommy. Bobby, for Pete's sakes, Ellen, is that yours? Yes, that's mine. Come on, Davy. 
Mr. Belvedere, hey, Mr. Belvedere, Ellen Baker's here. She's just going out of the store. I have eyes, Mr. Bubaker. Uh, yeah, but she's got a kid. Ellen Baker's got a kid. That's him with her. See no evil, Mr. Bubaker. Uh, yeah, but she, but... Yes, sir, Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> Why, Bill, uh, come in, sit down. Ellen, I... I've wanted to talk to you for... Well, for days. You don't have to explain, Bill, I understand. No, I don't think you do. Bill, you don't have to go through all this. You're doing it because... Well, because you're nice and you feel you ought to. You're never more wrong. I don't blame you. I told you before. I'm a widow and I have a child. I know how you feel. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that was the way I felt. You see, you, you came at me kind of fast the other night... Well, it's taken me until now to get up enough gumption to face a competition. Davy and... and your husband. Bill, I loved my husband. He was a wonderful person. I married him on leave. I guess we wrote more words and letters than we ever got a chance to say to each other in person. He was killed before Davy was born. You don't have I... to tell me all this. But I do. I'm proud I married him, Bill. I'm sorry he didn't get to see his son, but... But there's no competition. Ellen, I love you. Don't you see? I want to build a home. Perfect timing. That'll be my mother. Your mother? Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Chase. Oh, fine, thank you. She wants you to have dinner at the tri Gamble. Dinner? House. Tonight? I'd love to. Seven? Yes, I'll be there, Mrs. Chase. Thank you. I'll drop by after dinner. We'll give her the big news, huh? <laughs> you were pretty sure of yourself, weren't you, chum? No, ma'am. I was pretty sure of you. Martha is so grateful you gave her the day off, Mr. Belvedere. And so am I. Oh, that turkey. I declare I've never tasted turkey like that before. I've never prepared a few like that before. <laughs> Mrs. Chase. Yes, Avery? Mrs. Chase, don't you have to be a single girl to be a member of a sorority? Hmm? I mean, you can't have a family belong, can you? Well, of course not. Then how come they're all rushing Ellen Baker, having her here for dinner and everything? Why, she's even got a little boy. She's what? The dishes, Mr. Boo Baker. A little boy? Mrs. Chase, there's no cause for alarms and excursions. Many women have a son, yourself included. It requires no particular talent. Oh. But she said nothing about it to me. Neither did Bill. But if, if there's a child, there must be a husband. Not necessarily. <laughs> Miss Baker is a relic. <gasps> relic means widow, madam. <laughs> That's what she says. Speak no evil, Mr. Boo Baker. What Mrs. Ashley says or does is no concern of yours. Those dishes are. Well, it's a grave concern to me. Did you say Mrs. Ashley? Yes. Ellen Baker Ashley, and she's no relation to the Ashleys of Newport, madam. Oh. Uh, excuse me, I, um, I'd better join the girls. And I do think I should have been told, Miss Baker. After all, I am Bill's mother. I'm sorry, Mrs. Chase. It's just that Bill asked me not to say anything until he gets here. Naturally, he wanted to be present when we told you about our engagement. Engagement? Well, yes. Isn't that what you're upset about? Oh, this only makes matters worse, Mrs. Ashley. Oh. Oh, I see. So Mr. Belvedere's been talking to you. You've heard about my little boy. Yes, I have. And I must say that... Well, that I'm surprised. Yes, yes, I'm sure you are. Please, Mrs. Ashley, let me make myself perfectly clear. You've made yourself clear. You and Mr. Belvedere. Good night, Mrs. Chase. What happened? Bill, please. When I stopped by the Trigam house to pick you up, you were gone. Ask your mother what happened. I did ask her. I can't get anything out of her except my poor boy and that unfortunate girl. What did my mother tell you? Everything that Mr. Belvedere told her. When she got through, oh, I Oh, no, was... no, come on, honey. Calm down. You're all excited. That's right. Stick up for your mother. She's 100% right, and I'm 100% wrong. Ellen, this is you and me. Let's leave mothers and kids out of Don't it. Don't call Davy kids. You hate kids. You called him a little monster once. I never... But that was before I met the little... 
Oh, you're being very, very unfair. Something told me not to get involved with a man who has a mother. Everybody has a mother. You can't help not it. Not when she listens to people like Mr. Belvedere. Well, this will fix him. When I'm through with this article... What here, article? Bill, get out, please. I want to finish it and mail it to Look Magazine tonight. But you can't do that. He'll be expelled and you'll be expelled. I, I simply won't argue with a man who's emotionally upset. I am emotionally upset. Holy smoke. You women don't make sense. You don't think straight. You don't even... Oh, gosh, honey, what are we fighting about? I told you before. Ask your mother and ask Mr. Belvedere. All right, I will. Good night. <laughs> Who is it? Bill Chase. I want to talk to Mr. Belvedere. Open this door, I'll break it down. Who does that guy think he is, Mr. Belvedere? Talking to you like that. Yeah, the nerve. Are you going to open this door or not? The door is unlocked, Mr. Chase. I ought to let you have it. I wouldn't wave your fists at me, Mr. Chase. I think it only fair to mention that during my Japanese period, I taught judo at Tokyo University. <laughs> Who told you to go sticking your student in other people's business? I find your language insulting and obscure. I'm talking about Ellen and me. You filled my mother with a lot of nonsense about Ellen. And now she's called the whole thing off. Mr. Chase, if you are under the delusion that I have come between you and this young lady, ah, that is not true. Oh, fine. Great. You've ruined my life. You've ruined Ellen's life. Young man, unless I am mistaken, and I never am. Yeah, huh? that's right. He never is. Shut up. <laughs> you have agitated your metabolism to a point where your behavior is quite adolescent. Adolescent? It is true that you have a problem. Miss Baker is an attractive, intelligent, albeit overly ambitious young lady who has a baby. That's none of your... Your mother is a kindly, well-meaning, albeit overly possessive woman who has a son. Is that your business? The fact that you have failed to reconcile the two points of view to your advantage is your problem, Mr. Chase, not mine. Indeed, I view the whole matter with complete indifference. I don't want to hear any more out of you. It doesn't matter so much anyway, because you won't be around here much longer. And what do you mean by that? Just wait. Wait until Ellen drops her bombshell on you. Tonight. Gee, what a crisis. What's he talking about anyway? Ellen's going to drop a bobshell. Here? Tonight? Not here, Mr. Boobaker. In the mailbox, I fear. Uh, Mr. Belvedere, where are you going? There's no time to lose. But you can't go out, not in your pajamas. If you'll kindly hand me my top coat. You'll catch your death of cold. Apparently, Cornelius, you have never read Admiral Byrd's story. I am the only member of the expedition who didn't. <laughs> Mr. Belvedere, you can't go around the streets running around like that. It's 11 o'clock at night and pajama Rito week isn't until April. I have no time in this emergency to take cognizance of false modesty. But where are you going? I am calling on Miss Ellen Baker. Good night, gentlemen. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, we'll bring you the third act of Mr. Belvedere Goes to College. Our guest tonight is Miss Helene Stanley, a brand new starlet at 20th Century Fox. I can see, Helene, why you passed your screen test so easily. Red hair and a lovely luxe complexion, <laughs> that's a winning combination. Thank you very much, Mr. Keeley. But of course, a screen test is only the beginning. I'm so grateful for the acting experience I've already had. You specialized in singing and dancing roles, haven't you? Yes. And that's why I spend so much time on the set of Dancing in the Dark. It's a behind-the-scenes story of studio life. With William Powell being his debonair self as a famous actor. Isn't he wonderful? And Mark Stevens is a romantic lead. Yes, Dancing in the Dark is a happy experience altogether. Betsy Drake is a most engaging young songstress. Yes, and isn't she a joy to look at? And it's easy to see she's a luxe girl. Indeed she is, Mr. Kennedy. Betsy Drake has one of the loveliest complexions I've ever seen. And I know she depends on Luxo facials to keep it that way. Like other Hollywood stars, she finds it's a beauty care that works. You know, actually three out of four complexions became softer, smoother, in a short time with Lux Soap Care. Recent tests by skin specialists proved it. It's such an easy, effective care. I know I wouldn't be without it. Thanks, Miss Helene Stanley. I'm sure lovely women everywhere agree that Lux Toilet Soap gives delicate skin gentle, protecting care it needs. If you haven't tried it, why not begin your Lux Soap facials tomorrow? 
Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is the fragrant white beauty soap nine out of ten famous screen stars use. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeling. The curtain rises on the third act of Mr. Belvedere Goes to College, starring Clifton Webb as Mr. Belvedere, Colleen Gray as Ellen, and Robert Stack as Bill. Thirty minutes ago, Mr. Belvedere left a dormitory at Clemens College and hastened to Ellen Baker's apartment. Now, there'd be nothing very unusual about that were it not for the fact that it's late at night and Mr. Belvedere's attire consists of pajamas, bedroom slippers, and a top coat. Obviously, Mr. Belvedere is very anxious to see Ellen, but Ellen hasn't the slightest desire to see him. She's refused to open the door, whereupon the very determined Mr. Belvedere has commenced an ascent up the fire escape. All right, brother, now start climbing down that fire escape. I beg your pardon? We just happen to be police officers, mister, so get down here and start explaining. As you wish, gentlemen, but I assure you this is a mistake. Yeah, and you made it. Look at him, Al. In pajamas, yes. Stick out your mitts, brother, and no false moves. Stop calling me brother. I can conceive of no circumstance in which you and I could be remotely related. Come on, let's get him out of here. No, but you can't do this to me. I'm a student at the university. Mm, get him, Al, a student. How long have you been going to school, Jack? 20 years? There's a young lady in this apartment house who will who knows me very well. Yeah, and I suppose you was calling on her, huh? Exactly. In pajamas? Okay, wise guy. What's her name? Ellen Baker. Uh, that is uh, Mrs. David Ashley. And if you don't believe me, why don't, don't you ask her? Third floor, apartment D. Well? Let's take him up, Al. If this lady don't know him, this could develop into a very interesting case. Okay, college boy, start moving. Sorry to disturb you, lady, but we found this mug on the fire escape. He said he had to see you. How about it, mister? You know this guy? Know him? Well, Miss Baker, kindly identify me. We may have had our differences, but I know I may rely on your innate sense of fair play. Officers, I never saw this man before in my life. That does it, Jack. Boy, are you under arrest. May I inquire on what charge? Peeping Tom. Peeping Tom. Good night, officers, and thank you very much. Peeping Tom, huh? Okay, what's your name? John J. Doe. <laughs> A wise guy, huh? Okay, Mr. Doe. We'll just dump you in the drunk tank and refresh your memory. Take the handcuffs off him, Al. Uh, that will not be necessary. Here you are. Hey! Hey! You didn't lock the handcuffs. Of course I locked them. The guy's a Houdini. I talked, Mr. Houdini. <laughs> Frisk him. Find out who he is. Yes, Sarge. Sure, sure. Sergeant, you will long remember this dank, turgent night to, to your regret. You sure this guy ain't top-heavy? You will discover that I'm no more sane and much more sane than you are. <laughs> to wit, I know that you have the legal right to hold me for 48 hours. I also know that I have the right to make one telephone call. Yeah, who do you think's running this joint? You are, sir, and I suggest you enjoy it while you may. <laughs> now, you don't scare me, Pop. Yeah. All right, there's the phone booth. Make your legal call. Number, please. Operator, uh, this is Lynn Belvedere. I want to call Washington, D.C., person to person, and reverse the charges. With whom do you wish to speak, please? Mr. J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> hey, Sarge, did you hear him? J. Edgar Hoover. I heard him. Throw him in the drunk tank. <laughs> Hey, you. Belvy. Sarge, look, look at him. He's standing on his head. Ah, uh, you should try it sometime. Yoga, very refreshing. <laughs> well, Sergeant, has my call from Washington come through? Uh, not yet, and don't give us any more of that stuff. We called the local FBI, see? Nobody ever heard of you. They shall. Uh, in the meantime, there's some people here to see you. Uh, show them in, please. Outside! This tank ain't no parlor, mister. Uh, that is quite apparent. Adieu, classmate. So long, chum, and thanks for showing us how to pick the lock. <laughs> you showed them what? You'll find out, Sergeant. You'll find out. 
There he is, Mr. Brubaker. There's Mr. Belvedere. You okay, Mr. Belvedere? I was the one who brought Mrs. Chase and everyone, Mr. Belvedere. In time, I shall determine whether to thank you or not, Cornelius. Uh, well, Mr. Belvedere, this here young lady has explained everything. Uh, about knowing you, that is. Good evening, Ellen. Good evening. So we'll call it all a mistake, Mr. Belvedere, and drop the whole thing? Okay? On the contrary. I shall fight my arrest through to the highest authority, and I demand a hearing and now. Gee, another crisis. But she dropped the charges. Miss Baker, why did you drop the charge? Because I couldn't sleep. Uh, that was your conscience. I slept perfectly. Yeah, he sleeps upside down. I just can't stand here, Sergeant, and swear I've never seen him before. Because I have seen him before. But I hope I never see him again. And that goes for one or two other people here, too. Well, if you'd only listen to me, Ellen, oh, I could... Mr. Belvedere, I wish you could do something to bring them together. Ellen won't speak to Bill, and Bill won't speak to me. Oh, please. What is in that envelope, young lady? The article I wrote about you for Look magazine. Why haven't you mailed it? Because I just finished it. I won't let her mail it, that's why. Just try and stop me. You'd be foolish to try, Mr. Chase. Let her blast my college career and her own. Let her go on to a shabby success... Dragging her ill-fed offspring behind her. There'll be nothing shabby about Ellen's success. And Davy's no ill-fed offspring. He's a darn fine oh, little... yes, yes, I'm sure You he keep is. out of this, Mother. Oh, Mr. Bill. Chase, be wary of women who are hagridden with emotion and ambition. I am not. I am not hagridden with ambition. I'm just... I'm just tired. Oh, Ellen. On guard, on guard, Mr. Chase. One does not reason with an emotional young woman. I'm not emotional. All I want to do is graduate from college and keep Davy and have a home and... Yes? Oh, all right. Here, take your old story. Thank you. Uh, look, would you parties mind continuing this outside my police station? Hello? Yep. Yep. Huh? Yeah, he's right here. It's for you, Mr. Belvedere. From Washington. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Edgar. <laughs> yes, yes, there was some trouble, but I've taken care of it myself. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't think it'll be necessary. Oh, 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 oh and you too. Well, <laughs> well, thanks for calling, Edgar. Goodbye. Hmm. <laughs> Any questions, Sergeant? Oh, no, sir. No questions, sir. Would you like a squad car to drive you home, maybe? <laughs> thank you, thank you. But I shall walk home to the dormitory uh, with Cornelius. Gee whiz, J. Edgar Hoover. Oh, thanks, Mr. Belvedere. I'll enjoy the walk very much. Good night, everyone. Come along, Cornelius. Right, Come yes. again, Mr. Belvedere. Come again. Now, my instructions are quite simple, Cornelius, but you will kindly repeat them. Oh, sure, Mr. Belvedere. I take this envelope that Miss Baker gave you to the all-night drugstore, and I buy some stamps, right. and I mail it. <laughs> Gee whiz, Mr. Belvedere, you'd think I was dumb or something. Far from it, Cornelius. But, well, there's one thing I don't get. I thought all this was because you didn't want the magazine to print... Never that. mind that, Cornelius. And if you know what's good for you, remember that in a few short weeks, I shall be a senior. Oh, I won't tell anybody, Mr. Belvedere. Gee... Not even J. Edgar Hoover. And now, uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the closing chapter in the 75th commencement exercises of Clemens University. The presentation of the diploma to a man who has singularly distinguished himself in the outside world as well as in our own academic world. Well, they finally got around to you, Mr. Belvedere. The most boring ceremony class, I've had the misfortune to witness the since they gave me the Moore House Award. Well, well, I wouldn't trade my diploma for anything. Valedictorian, the only man in the long history of Clemens to have earned his degree in one year, Mr. Lynn Belvedere. Mr. Belvedere, congratulations. You are not only a great scholar, but a man of principle. And I want to thank you for keeping your bargain. Bargain, President Keating? About the publicity and notoriety, I mean. Oh, oh, oh not at all, President Keating. And now, it gives me great pleasure to hand you your diploma. Thank you, Dean Gibbs. And it gives me great pleasure to present you with this. But, 
But, Mr. Belvedere, a copy of Look magazine. The cover. Look what it says. Mr. Belvedere goes to college by Ellen Baker Ashley. I kept my word, sir. Remember, you just graduated me. And a picture of us here on the stage, handing you your diploma. Why, Mr. Belvedere, this just happened. This is impossible. Yes. Yes, it is. We certainly don't need any cheerleaders to let our stars know how much we like Mr. Belvedere Goes to College. And now it's curtain call time for Clifton Webb, Colleen Gray, and Robert Stagg. Clifton, as Mr. Belvedere, you've certainly done it again. Yes, I find it most depressing. Depressing? <laughs> depressing to be famous? Well, there should be a certain dash to success. Now, after some 30 years in the theater, I find it depressing to achieve notoriety as a babysitter in a pole vaulter. Oh, you, you don't like this fame, then, huh? I love it. <laughs> you know, I'm sure the audience wants to know about the future of Mr. Belvedere. Well, Mr. Belvedere is never predictable. Only one thing is certain about his future. It'll never be dull. He always has something new, just like Lux Soap. I've used Lux Soap for years for, as a complexion care, and now they've brought out the new bath size. Don't you think the new bath size of Lux Soap is grand, Mr. Webb? My dear, don't be naive. Who do you think invented the new bath size? <laughs> you, you mean it was... It was Mr. Belvedere? Uh, that is correct. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Belvedere already knows, but you might tell the rest of us about next week's play, Bill. Well, next week's play is tuneful, it's amusing, it's romantic. And as for the stars, three of your favorites. Robert Cummings, Anne Blythe, and William Bendix. The play is a gay musical story for the whole family. The universal international picture, I'll Be Yours. That's a very entertaining prospect, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. and come again. <laughs> 